Good morning. It is August 19th, Wednesday. I'm Jason Stanton. I serve First Lutheran in Onalaska, Wisconsin, and this is my morning musing today that has to do uh, with pendulum swings. I remember uh, there was a, a friend of ours when I was growing up that whenever we'd have a sleepover at their house, uh, where I slept was on the pull-out couch, and there was in that living room where the couch was a big clock. It wasn't a grandfather clock that stood on its own. It was a it was just one that hung on the wall. But trying to fall asleep with that tick tock, tick tock. I remember it would wake me up in the middle. Of the, it was a good precursor to adulthood, as it seems like almost always any little thing that happens, I wake up and I hear it. Um, we had a storm a couple nights ago and I didn't hear a thing though, so it's not a rule, it's more of a guideline, but um, those pendulum swings, uh, they can not just wake me up literally, uh, but as there are pendulum swings in life, metaphorically speaking, uh, they, they keep me up at night too. Uh, I'm thinking about the different swings that there are in parenting, in how to use technology, in, I mean, pretty much anything has pendulum swings, right? We, we go to one extreme and treat something in this way, and then we go all the way to the other extreme uh, in response. And I've wondered about, uh, you know, when I was in seminary, we talked about how the church really did something extremely different in the 1950s and 60s and 70s than it had in the previous 50 or, or even 100 years. Uh, the level of participation in church was something like over 70% of Americans uh, at one point in the 50s. Don't quote me on that. I didn't actually look this up, but I that's what I remember is it was the vast majority of people were members of a church and usually attending church. And in response, uh, and we've been a little behind Europe on this, but fewer and fewer people over the last 40 years have attended worship or make themselves members of a church. Uh, there's a there's a lot of articles you can find on this, the rise of the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, not N-U-N-S. The rise of the N-O-N-E-S, those nuns are those who respond to what religious affiliation uh, do you consider yourself a part of? And instead of saying Roman Catholic or Protestant or Lutheran or whatever, they would say nun of the above. And, and that number of people that are responding none has, bec has gotten higher and higher over the last couple decades especially. There's a, a pendulum swing away from uh, what the 50s and 60s looked like where it was almost like just a, a part of being in a community. You'd, you'd move to a new community perhaps and you'd join a church. Like that's just what you did. That was one of the places where networking happened and that's why you know, youth group was one of the major things that, that happened for young people. And uh, that was before, of course, sports and all the extracurriculars have really stepped up uh, the demands on our kids' and families' time. Things are just changing. And with, with this COVID-19 time, I'm just thinking about all the ways the pendulum is swinging in, in ways perhaps that we don't even quite see yet. Uh, a lot of us pastors are are wondering, and dare I say worried, that with no one being able to worship together, might Sunday mornings uh, become something just completely different than what they have been for our whole lifetimes. Uh, people are discovering, many of us are discovering that Sunday morning, just, you know, on our own, it's pretty fantastic uh, to just have this whole morning uh, to, it's like that Lionel Richie song, you know, easy like Sunday morning. And uh, that's never been my theme song because I'm a pastor. Uh, I usually come home Sunday afternoon exhausted, but uh, I wonder what it will be like after. But before we get to the after, 
we're trying to figure out them now, the, the, the current situation. And so our leaders, um, other pastors, and I, we are trying to figure out what faith formation can look like in the midst of whatever pendulum swings are maybe happening or not happening. And so I just, I've been musing about, I've been thinking a lot about uh, what can we do this fall, while, especially while the weather is still okay, uh, what can we do this fall that will be significant ways for our community to continue to grow with each other? Um, I, I think having an outdoor worship service, for example, which I'm hoping is going to happen this Sunday, um, we've got people in the city clerk's office that are working hard to see if this can if this can happen in Fifth Avenue. And if it can't happen in Fifth Avenue, I think we're still just gonna do it in our parking lot if we must there. But bottom line, we're gonna start trying some outdoor worship services. I'd like to see us have a, a, a first Lutheran family camp at Sugar Creek Bible Camp in September, which would come after a First Fest event. Our Sunday school superintendent, Beth Miller, has all kinds of ideas for what Sunday school could look like based on what Vacation Bible School looked like. Uh, I'm starting to talk with parents about what confirmation uh, might be like. We're, we're already uh, planning for what Sunday mornings uh, after First Fest will look like, back to two services, 8 and 1030, with times for fellowship and learning in between. Um, you know, all these Bible readers that are that are following the, the texts as we read the Bible over the course of a whole year. Um, maybe Sunday morning is a time that they could get together and talk about the, the many chapters of Scripture that they've read that week. I guess what I'm saying is, I hope that one of the opportunities that, that uh, COVID-19 uh, gives us is to, to think about ways of, of growing and learning perhaps letting the pendulum swing into some growth and learning that wouldn't have happened before. As much as we're not maybe at worship as much, maybe it's making us dive into scripture more, uh, reach into our prayer lives more. Um, and so that's what I invite you to, to think about today is how could or how do you plan to have First Lutheran be a part of your faith formation uh, as we enter into a new program year? Because program churches are kind of at a Kind of wondering what programming looks like in a world where we can't meet in person like we would have before. God, we pray that whatever this program year holds, that first and foremost we could be as wise with our health as possible, and that beyond that we could also continue to grow in you, in our love for neighbor, uh, in our our wisdom and and the ways that we offer grace to each other in this life. Uh, so bless all those who are preparing uh, for programming in churches. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.